Okay. I want to show you a, another video that I think pairs with this really well. And again, we're trained to look at video. So when I start to look at the top of this position of one of the players that I work with at our school, I think we start seeing some things in her back. We see some things in our turn. If we saw this, we'd say, now when she gets in this position at the top, what's going to happen in terms of the consistency of the face and path? But also, how's her back going to handle this over a period of time? So this is a player that came to me at our university because she had back pain. She literally couldn't play because of the back pain. And I look at this video position and say, yeah, it, it doesn't shock me that as you turn away from the target and create this motion, we've got to somehow stop that turn and get some firing forward uh, before you get to that position, okay? Now, if we look at her torque graph, you can start to see how much time she spends in the negative. So she bottoms out at about 45 Newton meters per kg of negative torque. This is something I actually tend to see in a lot of the female players that I work with. They're hypermobile, they're really rotational, so they've spent a lot of time turning away from the target, and we have to really help control that a little bit. She doesn't cross the zero until about transition, and her negative impulse is twice as much as her positive impulse, meaning she's not actually leveraging the ground to stop the turn and initiate the turn, She's passing everything up to her trunk and trying to use everything in her trunk and arms to create that rotation. And so our goal was, let's create this to be a little bit less negative. Let's make it go positive a little bit earlier and see if we can get more positive than negative impulse in the ground so that you're leveraging the ground and your powerful leg muscles to create this motion instead of passing everything to the trunk. So. This is a player, and I've had her in the lab multiple times, okay? This is her with an iron swing. But again, we see the exact same pattern, right? A really, really big negative torque. Um, a lot of time spent in the anterior, posterior, right? Just huge, huge anterior, posterior motion in the backswing. And then she's just trying to catch everything up and hope for the best so she can leverage that lower body, okay? I'll walk you through at least some of the drills we did to take her from that large negative to this position right here, right? So we went from 44 or 45 negative to 16 negative. We're now basically approaching zero as she finishes that swing. And then the best part of this swing is she went from a negative net impulse to a positive net impulse. And this was just over the span of about 20 or 30 minutes of working with her. This is the power of being able to detect these force plates. She's been working a long time on trying to shorten her swing and create better positions at the top. But once we jump into the data, we can start to understand what is it that's, that's causing her to create this, okay? And I'll show you for her what that was. So we went into the 2D here and what I wanted to look at was where she was actually applying force, especially as she was finishing out her backswing and then initiating her, her downswing. And so if we watch here, this is her at the top of her swing, okay? And again, this is her like maybe an arm parallel in the backswing. What we can see is she's really late to shift force towards the ball of her lead foot. She actually does a nice job on the trail foot um, but this stay, stays way far back. And what we start to look at is this line of pressure. So she actually has pressure further forward in her trail side than in her lead side. That makes it really, really hard to create the forces you need to stop that and then create that motion forward. So she was a player, we, we did a little bit of force pedal work and that helped her a little bit back on the plates. Uh, we did a little bit of just sensations of movement and that helped a little bit. What was really cool with her was the thing that actually allowed her to do that and that was the feedback on the plates. So all I did is I just turned the plates right in live mode, put her on the plates, had her do her foot detection and then she's standing there in golf posture and in fact she actually had a club in. And I just said, I just want you to take a back swing and I want you to take this red dot a little bit more to the heel and bring the blue dot a little bit more to the ball. That was literally the only feedback I gave her. And she just kind of stood there and created this motion. 
And she's like, oh yeah, cool. I can see that in the plates. I see that line of pressure be positive five instead of negative five. And I think that's something that I could recreate. So I threw her right back on the plates and said, okay, let's do that as maybe a little bit of a trigger. It was just two of these and then a swing. And what we were able to see is that as we now look at where she's pushing on the feet, now she gets to that top of the swing or about arm parallel here. And now she's gone from negative seven to positive eight. She asked me, she said, hey, Tyler, is that a, is that a good change? Is that a big change? I said, you literally changed the line of pressure 15 degrees in about two minutes. That's a huge change. It's a huge change. And what that actually then allows her to do, and again, she still has a tendency. She's still saying in the positive value, she never got positive with that line of pressure in her old swing. But what that actually allows her to do is now when we go in to some of these anterior posterior forces, you remember how big these were on that first swing, this huge big spread of that pull away from the target. Now she's actually able to stop, the, stop some things and create a much better motion towards the target. Now we're able to create that positive net impulse and we're able to lessen that zero a little bit, get her a little bit shorter at the top of her swing. It's, it's funny the things that really speak to the golfer. Uh, and for her, the thing that really spoke to her was she got to the top of her swing and she's like, hey, I've, I've shortened my swing. I'm not getting so long in that movement and bent over this way because she's actually able to leverage the ground. And for her, it was all about point of application of the lead foot. That's a simple fix that we were able to give to her that allowed her to stop that backward motion and actually utilize the ground to create this shorter swing. This is a real power of an impulse measurement to be able to show going from that big negative to a positive by training the point of application, okay?